This is foot to the, whoa! It's 1998, I'm in marching band, and I need to bust now. I've been horny since first period. I need a bust, I can't wait. I knew I had this problem, and it's not getting better. Where's Frankie Mindcabbage? He drove his parents' Astro van to school today, and I need an excuse to go in his van. I am so horny. Oh, I had lunch seventh period. That's a long time to wait, but you can't go in the building. This bass drum carrier is pushing on my dick bass, and we're outside on a hot parking lot running through sets, and I'm horny. Five minute water break. We get a five minute water break. We get to go to our water bottles. Five minutes. I can do this. Hey, Frank Mindcabbage. My drum lugs are all squeaking. Can, can I use your valve oil to lube them? No, I just need a little. Can I use the one in your van? Like, I know that one's already done. How about I buy you a Surge? Thanks, Frank Mindcabbage. I'll be right back. This is the best vehicle to get off in because General Motors use cheap upholstery glue. It smells like cum anyway. I could bust in the footwell, and no one will know. The rear windows slide open manually, so I don't sweat too much. And they're high enough that I can lay on my back, and uh, no one can see. Frank Mindcabbage plays Barry Sachs anyway, so the back seats are out. You know, but still. I'm not doing this in the school, because Christian Yoder... Got caught cranking it in the Ag Hall bathroom, and his parents sent him to Catholic school. This is simultaneously a GMC Safari and a Chevy Astro and a camper conversion all in one. You know, what's in a name? <sighs> How long was that? Well, <clears throat> time to grind it into the carpet with the heel of my airwalk. And back to band practice I go. Hey, Frankie Mindcabbage, here are your keys. Yeah, I got the lube, it's all good. Thanks, man, thanks, bro. Don't get all high and mighty. I'm not the first and I won't be the last to do it in one of these things. This has the Chevy logo on the front, but GMC on the wheel and on the registration, but it has an Astro front end. But it's a camper conversion with real wood trim drilled with machine screws into the plastic dash. And that's how this was sold. These wheels, OEM. This teal paint color, OEM. Pinstriping, dealer option. It even originally had a CRT TV and a VHS player. Chevy Astro Van, sponsored by the Smoke and Bust, a dispensary and burlesque house your uncle is trying to get funded, but no bank will touch him because he spent his PPP loan on a podcast he didn't have. And Dodge was ruling everything with the Dodge Caravan. That van changed the face of American families. And here is General Motors trying to play catch up. What they made was a big boxy van with styling as sober as an alcoholic judge and a rear wheel drive layout to separate it from what Chrysler was doing. They say they were doing it intentionally, but they didn't have time to make front engine standard across all minivans. This is a work van. It has a unibody design, but it also has a subframe. This was a van that could handle bigger loads than Lazy Joke here. It had all the hallmarks of a van that would be hot for a few years and then become catalytic converter bait. But that's the thing. This was about riding the minivan craze without having to build from the ground up. This ran on the M platform, shared with the identical GMC Safari. You might not think this would have been popular starting out since it didn't have the all-wheel drive of the L van, at least not at first and it had the kind of bland appearance that gives off screen door salesman vibes. But these things were everywhere because movies and TV lied to you in the 80s. You thought everybody was driving IROX. No, you had Chevy Astros rounding the corner with a grill like the face of a pencil pusher who just got passed over for promotion for the fifth time this year. Even going to the beach, it's going to look like it's clocking in. This van runs on the 4.3 liter V6 EFI engine making about 165 horsepower, and matched to a four-speed automatic with overdrive. This engine has the same bore and stroke as the 5.7-liter Chevy V8, 
but for 92, a balance shaft was installed to smooth out the vibration. People like to call these V6s Chevy 350s with two cylinders missing. You would think this would mean less noise, but the position of the engine relative to where you're sitting makes this louder. Yes, you're getting a truck powertrain and towing capacity north of 5,000 pounds, but a truck powertrain means truck handling. The GM 4300 V6 began in 1985, and production continued until 2014. There have been bands formed, risen to fame, fell to crazy excess, and ended up on VH1's Behind the Music in the amount of time that this engine has existed. It's odd because the 4300 is a disappointing to average engine. GM used it in anything that had to have a tow rating, but not have to go fast or get good fuel economy, such as <gasps> CNK trucks, G-series vans, Astro vans, Impala sedans, and taxi packages, square body El Caminos, low spec Monte Carlos, the S10 pickup, the S10 Blazer, and the worst car I ever drove, the Oldsmobile Bravada. But while the 4300 whined and moaned in the bravada, in the Astro van, it's lively. Probably because Chevy Astro vans are lighter. Oh, I can roll into it? Okay. It'll be better. This is foot to the... Whoa! <laughs> Did it go back down the first? It tried. It tried. <laughs> and this is everything she can do. There's 55. Holy moly, this engine's screaming. All right, it gets up there. It will literally, it would, do you think it was just holding it at like, like 5,000? Yeah. That oh, thing was yeah. moving. I find this weird that this is the same engine. I think it's the same engine that's in the Bravada. Yeah, most And that thing wanted, didn't want to do anything. Of course, that had a weird all-wheel drive function, and this is just rear wheel. All right. Okay. The standard price for the Chevy Astro van or GMC Safari in 1992 was $14,700 or $18,200 with options, which comes out to about $36,700 in 2023, which is not bad for what you're getting. But this is the price before the Explorer camper conversion. You will be paying a lot more and you're getting not a lot. They didn't care when they changed this into a camper van. There's stuff in here just stuck from the 1970s. Bad wood. Extra weight. You're a dumb American and here's your luxury. Tim, the owner, had a pretty interesting path to this car. The previous owner brought it from Montana to Delaware with plans to treat it as a project car. But after adding foam board, they abandoned it before selling it to Tim. And while he did have to make some modifications like fixing the wiring, new spark plugs, new tires, and new window motors, the van now six sits at 162,000 miles. And while it's not like it has the evergreen feel of a garage-kept 90s car, it runs well, especially when you count the weird export taillight, which I don't really get. It doesn't have reverse lights. It doesn't have reverse lights. There's no reverse lights back here. It has European taillights maybe Australian. So the amber turn signals are now where the reverse lights would be. Are these like from a Holden or something? I don't get it. Somewhere in the past, it got foreign taillights on this car. The Chevy Astro is sort of a weird artifact of an era where everyone was united by the desire to own a metaphor for family living, regardless of whether or not they had families themselves like drawing lines between mosquito bites. Building a family is just an evolutionary game of connect the dots. Sometimes it's motivated by a desire to be close with another person. Sometimes it's the desire to leave a legacy. Other times it's because a guy made up a latex allergy and then failed the self-control Olympics. Either way, the chronology of life has a tendency toward producing more of it. And not everybody who has kids is necessarily ready to have them. But even as a kid, how are you going to notice something like that? Especially if you grew up in something that represented productive custodial readiness. That no matter what happens, the grown-ups have the situation well at hand. As a kid, you could trust in the process of adulthood. In the back of an Astro van, you could rest assured that the man at the wheel knew what he was doing in all aspects of life. You didn't realize that, a lot of the time, 
Adults are making it up as they go. But through the eyes of a child on a road trip, you assume adults find comfort and certainty in paperwork. That they're somehow nourished by the trail of receipts longer than the patience of a crisis line operator. But now you're the adult. You're at the wheel. And the van that used to signify a person in the family now represents a sort of repressed childhood. A maturity marked by resistance. Yeah, I'm an adult. But do I have to be? Why can't I just smoke in my van all day? The errands will get done. But in the absence of a family or any pragmatic reason for owning this much car, an Astrovan inspires an aimlessness that not a lot of cars offer. Because you really could just drive this till it dies, hardly caring that you'll never go fast or look cool. Although, now it borders on peak 90s appearance, so you will be cool. Even in its day, it was outdated right off the line. It was old school with a window sticker. But the Astro Van was presented with all the lustful, horny, pick-me energy of a checkout line magazine cover. In 1992, you could plausibly believe that the person driving this had his life in order. The picket fence and the family. Maybe an elderly relative in the guest room. A hairline as thick as the bond between a boy and his stack of nudie mags. Today, it's the official car of chronic masturbator Bobby Bustamante. He used to be a shortstop for the Johnsonville Scorers. He could have made the majors, but he fell down a flight of stairs while violating a restraining order. Now he lives out of his Astro and smokes Farm Bill weed all day. His medical marijuana card is taped to the back windshield so he doesn't get bothered about all the smoke. A legend to the youth in the town. The man who belongs to the road and no one else. The Chevy Astro van lost its family man mentality in favor of a wanderer's spirit, jacking off in TA travel center bathrooms. There's a confidence in his lack of refinement, as if there's no better way to matter than to not matter at all. I got to this end of the video and forgot to talk about the digital dash. It's got a digital dash! Every corner of the LCD numbers are sharp and perfect, mm, definitive. The world has order because the components will save us. The computers will save us. In 1992, circuit boards will integrate and connect and download an FTP and ARPANET networking. Someday, everyone will have a computer, and I will use the computer to bust. <laughs> I will get in my Chevy Astro van and drag component cables, T5 cables, Ethernet from the old folks' home computer room out to the parking lot where I will download on BOD naked pictures of live nudes and into a wax paper cup out of which I was previously eating a mud sundae. I will now bust. Chevy Astro Van, it is come the van. <laughs>